Welcome to Creation Talk. Today we'll be answering the question, how did salt water and fresh water fish survive the flood? Welcome to Creation Talk. My name is Joe Tay, and this is Dr. Robert Carter. Hey, Joel. Hi. Um, today we're dealing with this question. Um, sometimes we are asked, how did fresh water and salt water fish survive the flood? What, why do people even ask this question? Well, most people know that freshwater fish don't survive in salt water. And when you read scripture, in fact, I've got it right here, okay. ready to go. Yeah. Genesis chapter 7, verse 19. And the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. And this is the flood. This is during the flood. And what it means is that the oceans overwhelmed all the freshwater places on land, setting up a massive problem. Doesn't that mean all the freshwater fish would go extinct if it really was a global flood? So how, how does a fish survive in salt water or fresh water? Is it just... Is it a biology question? Is that um... It's partially a biology question. It's partially a time question. But the biology is it's actually really interesting. Most fish are what are called stenohaline. What? What's that? That means they can only survive in fresh water or salt water. That is true today. Okay. But a lot of fish are called urihaline. They can go either way. Mm. The famous one, salmon. Salmon? They're yes. They're called anadromous. They, can, they spend most of their time in salt water but they go into freshwater to spawn. But sturgeon, smelt, some stingrays, famously the bull shark. Bull, bull shark, shark can swim hundreds of miles up the Mississippi, hundreds of miles up the Amazon. Uh -huh. So you can actually get a shark attack in fresh water. <laughs> yeah. And so there's, there's a lot of species that do that. But then on the other way, there's, there's some fish that are called catadromous. Yes. They spend most of their time in freshwater. They come to saltwater to spawn, like the North American and the European eel. Mm -hmm. famous for, for doing that. And there's another fish called the barramundi from Asia. And there are actually some populations of barramundi now that never go back into fresh water. So they have adapted, they have changed into they, a new environment. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. But fish do struggle with salt. I mean, a saltwater fish is constantly drinking and constantly excreting salt. If they don't do that, the salt in the water will overwhelm them. There's a lot less salt in fish meat than in the water. Okay. The opposite is true in freshwater. A freshwater fish has to constantly urinate. He's absorbing water through his gills and he's just got to get rid of it because there's a lot less salt in freshwater than there is in fish meat. So this is two completely different biological processes. Yeah. They're, they're struggling in different ways with salt concentration, but some fish can swim from salt water, they take a day or two to adjust, now they're in fresh water and vice versa. So Rob, didn't you tell me a story about you trying to grow freshwater fish in a salt water tank or something like that? Actually, what I said was uh, during my years of marine biology, when I had to start a salt water tank, um, a lot of times when you start a, a tank, there's a lot of chemical changes and fish tend to die. And so you don't want to put an expensive salt water fish in your brand new tank. What you do is you go to the aquarium store and get a freshwater molly for a dollar mm -hmm. and use that fish to start off your tank because the molly works great in salt water. Now, you don't want to just throw them in the salt water. You'd probably die. So but if you if you slowly add salt water to the, the container the fish is in over a couple of hours, you just release them and he'll be just fine in salt water for the rest of his life. So how does that fish help the tank? Uh, by eating and by excreting, he's producing nutrients for the bacteria. So beneficial bacteria, that's what you Yeah, so you can start building up a bacterial population in the tank. If you just throw a whole bunch of fish into a fish tank without bacteria ready, they'll pollute themselves. So what you did is you slowly change the water and let it adapt from fresh water to salt water. Yeah. And then you finally add in with a salt water fish. Yeah, I just put them in the, in the fish tank, pure salt water, and just fine. So for the fish that can only survive in fresh water or only survive in salt water, how do we explain that if the flood is only a few thousand years ago? How, why are they like that now? There's actually a lot, there's several different important things to consider when we're just talking about fresh water. That's really the problem. It's not the salt water fish, it's the fresh water fish that are the problem. Why is that? Because the oceans are salty and if the oceans come up onto land, then it's not a problem with the salt water fish it's, during the flood. It's the fresh water fish that live on land during the flood, we have a problem. So how do we get freshwater fish today? 
I mean, fish that only survive in fresh water. There's several different ways. Um, first of all, just because a fish species today can't tolerate salt water doesn't mean its ancestors couldn't tolerate salt water. So you're saying that they used to be able to tolerate both and they kind of lose one ability? Quite possibly. If you have a fish species living you know, way up in the Amazon and it never sees salt water, well, if there's a gene that helps it tolerate salt water and that gene gets deleted or broken or something, it doesn't affect the fish. So you're telling me that fish change very quickly after the time of the flood a few thousand years ago and they specialize because they lose some ability to adapt to the other, other sort of fresh water. Is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, that's exactly what I'm saying. A lot of adaptation that we see is a loss of ability to do something. A species getting fine-tuned to an environment, but once it becomes fine-tuned and highly specialized, well, it's not a generalist anymore, and it would have actually have a problem living in some of the environments that its ancestors could live in. Okay, this, this is kind of interesting because I think a lot of people have this idea that evolution believe in change and creation doesn't believe in change, but you're telling me that the word of God, the Bible, tells us that creatures would have to adapt very quickly. So it's actually the creation. If I'm, get, if I'm getting this right, creationists are actually the ones who believe in rapid changes. Yes. And evolutionists are the ones who believe in slow changes. Yes. And the reason they believe in slow changes is because Charles Darwin told us it takes a long time and species change over millions of years. So change over time is consistent with the word of God. Rapid changes, in fact. Yeah. The, the issue is that the word evolution means change. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, they ask them for a definition of evolution. They say, oh, evolution just change over time. Yeah, it's true. I mean, all my textbooks, they define evolution as change over time. Yeah, but that's the lamest possible definition. Because I believe in change over time and I'm not an evolutionist. Oh, and like you say, we believe in rapid, uh, rapid change over time. Yeah. So just because there's change doesn't mean evolution is true because evolution is really a belief in the common ancestry of all things. Huh. So really that definition should be enough change over enough time can theoretically lead to the common ancestry of all things. So why don't they define evolution as common ancestry? I, I don't know. And it's frustrating because what if the change is downhill? What if the change goes backwards? What if we see fish getting bigger and fish getting smaller over, over decades because of different environmental pressures? That, that's not any sort of a common ancestry argument. That's just God and his brilliance. When he created species, mm -hmm. he created them to be able to adapt. Okay. So adaptation is actually bad and change, rapid change is an argument for Design. For design. For, for design. the smartness of God who put into his creation the ability to do that. And even when you say that fish change by losing the ability to adapt to other sort of freshwater, that would be a loss. So it's yeah. a down, that's what I mean by downward well, Yeah, most of the change. changes we see are, are actually downhill. They're, it's purging away information that's not needed or something breaking. And, and that's the types of adaptation we see. We've written a lot about that. There's, there's tons of stuff on creation.com. Natural selection Q&A page, speciation Q&A page. It's just part of the creation model. Oh, that's wonderful. So, but does saltwater and freshwater mix together? Only sort of. And, and you're hinting at something that, that, I, that I told you earlier today. Uh, when Europeans discovered the Amazon, yes. they weren't inside of land. They weren't inside of land. They were not inside of land. So where were they? They were way out in the ocean in a sailboat. Mm -hmm. And as they're sailing across the ocean, they crossed some water that had a different color. And they said, wait a minute, this is fresh water. Uh -huh. So they turned and sailed right into the mouth of the Amazon. They were way over the horizon. They might have been 50 miles offshore. I don't know how far offshore they were. It was so, a long way. And they just followed the fresh water into the Amazon. So there was fresh water more than like way out there and it did not mix with the salt water. That's right. Because fresh water isn't as dense as salt water. Mm -hmm. Salt makes the salt water heavier. And the fresh water tends to float on salt water. And sometimes it can float for a very long time. Okay, so Rob, why would this be, why would this be something that we would consider when we talk about the worldwide flood? Because the rain that came down during the flood yes. would have been fresh water. Mm -hmm. And theoretically, possibly we could get a freshwater lens on top of the oceans during the flood, which would provide an environment for fish to survive if there were fish that cannot survive in salt water. And that water would not mix very quickly. It would take a while for it to... It depends on the salinity difference, depends on the temperature difference, and it depends on how much stirring there is. Oh, that's but interesting. But it, it can last for a long time. In fact, if there was a, um, 
a lot of vegetation floating on the water. Mm -hmm. That vegetation can have fresh water on top of it. You know, a giant log mat, maybe 100 miles across with lots of branches and leaves, fresh water on top. But it can also, as the fresh water soaks in, you can get a fresh water lens underneath it. Oh, wow. So there's tons of places for, for fishes to hide. But it might also be backing up a step mm -hmm. that they could survive in both fresh and salt water initially. And then they lose one ability. Yeah. So there's tons of options here. In fact, there's so many options, it's not really a problem like it sounds when it's first postulated. Just to summarize what we have covered so far, first of all, we have explained that evolution is not change over time. That's right. Because creationists believe in change and actually change that's much faster than what evolution is believed. That's right. And we also mentioned that salt and fresh water, um, they can exist in the same place because they, do, they may not always mix together. That's right. So we have mentioned that salt and fresh water can exist in the same place, one floating on top of the other and yes. they want to mix as quickly as they could. We have also mentioned that fish at the beginning could perhaps um, live in both salt and fresh water. They were designed to adapt. So after the flood, some fish might have actually lost the ability to go between both environments. Yeah. So I guess that answers the question we have. How do fresh and saltwater fish survive the flood? Thank you, Rob. We hope you enjoy um, this video and discussion. Join us on creation.com. Go to our website. If you like this discussion, type into our search engine, Freshwater Fish. We have a good article waiting for you. We have a few other videos that's related to this um, discussion as well. And leave your comments there. We would love to hear your thoughts on, on what you think about this discussion. Did we answer your question? And if you'd like to listen to us uh, while you're driving, subscribe to our audio podcast. Thank you.